Hey guys, welcome back to the Sports Betting Truth, creating a sports betting model 201 series. And today we're going to talk about forward thinking. Now this video, probably more than any other in the series, is going to be definitely more conceptual than technical. But it's very important because this is gonna be one of those things that separate winning models from losing models. And I kind of touched up on this on the preseason ratings video, but in this video, I'm kind of going to expand on that. Now, when I say forward thinking, what I mean by that is that your model needs to be one that does not summarize what has already happened. What I mean is that too many models out there simply take what has already happened, you know, calculate all the stats, and then make predictions on that. What a good model is going to do is try to fill in the gaps of games that have already happened. Now, I'm not saying that what your need, model needs to do is predict games. Any model, whether it's forward thinking or not, is going to do that. But for a model to be successful at predicting games, you need to predict how the rest of the season is going to play out and then use those numbers to predict games. So it's... So, for example, if a baseball season has played 80 games and you took all the stats of those 80 games and came up with all your stats and predicted games, that's a two-step process. You ingest the data and then you uh, summarize it and then you make predictions based on that aggregated data. There's a third step in between the prediction process and the ingest process, and that is trying to forecast what is going to happen the rest of the year and then use those outputs to make predictions with. And preseason ratings attempt to do this. Um, when I talk about preseason ratings and sports, especially college sports, they do attempt to project how the season is going to play out, but you need to do that throughout the whole season. So for example, I'm going to use a very crude example here, but say you have an NBA player who's played 10 games and he's X years old, he has X numbers of experience, and here are his stats so far. What you want to try to do is find players in the past who through 10 games have a similar profile to this player, a similar fingerprint, so to say. So find a bunch of similar players in age and experience um, and statistics through 10 games and then use that aggregate of players in the past to try to project how he's going to do. Because if it's a player doing very well, for example, and he's due to regress to the mean, you're going to want to do that with this player. Like say he's got off to a really hot start in those first 10 games. And if you're just using summary, uh, a, a summary model that just summarizes what's happened so far, I mean, obviously you're, through 10 games, you're probably still going to have preseason estimates uh, to help regress him to the mean, but you never want to stop creating these preseason estimates. I just call them in-season projections instead of preseason projections. But what you want to try to do is say, okay, here's some players in the past similar to this player. Here's how they performed after that 10 game stretch. Most of them are probably going to not play as well. And so therefore, here's how I forecast this player to go. You want to be able to do that, whether it's at the player level or the team level, whichever try, uh, model you're using, you want to be able to think forward. You want to be forward thinking. You don't want to summarize. Because if you're just summarizing, you're not going to be able to stay ahead of the curve because you know who is summarizing? the books, the markets, other people with models that are influencing those markets, you're not going to be successful with the summarization model. You're simply not. You need to take the next step and take the summarization into a forecast and then use that forecast to make predictions. That is what separates good models from bad models. And I know it sounds like a lot of work, but if you truly want to be in that very elite group of people who profit long-term betting on sports with a model, it, that's what it takes. I know it sucks because a lot of people probably have summarization models. I call them summarization models, you know, models that simply ingest what's happened so far and make prediction with that. There's no forward thinking with that. You're not going to be able to capture what can happen going forward. And so it's pretty much the concept that I'm beating on here. It's like making in-season preseason projections. Uh, to forecast how the rest of the season is going to play out, whether it be at the individual level or the team level. But that is the extra step you have to take. And yours truly used to be guilty of having summarization models. It wasn't until I took that next, next step in college football to where I really started to profit. And then the model I used this past year in college football, I was like, you know what, I don't need to use the 
summarization, or I don't need to use the projection approach in season. I can just get away with summarization because my model's so complex, it's not going to matter. And look at how I did. I did very poorly. So whenever you, whenever I do not take that additional step to forecast and create in season forecasts, things usually tend to go south. So that's honestly the difference in what you need to do if you're going to have a chance to win. I hope you are able to grasp what I'm talking about in this video when it comes to forward thinking. That is ultimately what you need to do to profit long term with the model. If you're only summarizing, you don't have a chance. I'm sorry. Anyway, that wraps up for this video. So the, the last section of this video or the series or the last part of the section in the series is going to be talking about back testing. That will be in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Until then, this is me, William Lee with Sports Betting Truth signing off.